Hello and welcome to a talk, a review of taxonomies of explainable artificial intelligence methods. My name is Timo Speit and I'm looking forward to presenting my work to you. This talk is a little bit a history of a research project I'm involved in um, and that has the overarching question of how explainability can help satisfy societal desiderata concerning intelligent systems. And with societal desiderata, we mean, for instance, fair decision-making, adequately calibrating trust in system, correctly attributing responsibility in human-in-the-loop scenarios. And explainability is often claimed that it can deliver these um, societal desiderata or can help delivering them. And because these are um, questions or these are desiderata that are best solved um, across the board, for instance, because um, responsibility attribution is something for philosophy and trust is something for, for instance, psychology. This question is best tackled interdisciplinarily. Um, but what makes this, um, tackling hard is that, um, explainability is a very confusing research landscape that has many distinctions and terms of which one needs to be aware. For instance, intelligibility, post hoc, ante hoc, feature importance, surrogate models, local perturbation, and so on and so on. So it's really hard to get started with um, explainability, especially as an interdisciplinary research project. So what might help in this case? In recent years, there have been many overviews and reviews concerning explainability because researchers saw that um, the field is very confusing. And one especially popular way was to give taxonomies of explainability methods. So, because these could provide a quick and nice overview over the field. However, yeah, as the research landscape is so confusing, also the approaches are not uniform. And it seems like many papers produce different, prop um, propose different taxonomies. And this makes starting with explainability still hard. So, what now? To provide a remedy to this uh, confusion, we reviewed 11 contemporary papers um, that propose some form of taxonomy of explainability methods and identified four different approaches to constructing such taxonomies. And each of these taxonomies has its individual advantages and drawbacks that we will also highlight. Furthermore, we will point out general problems of the field that uh, became clear when looking at these different taxonomies and also of the individual taxonomies. So in addition to making you aware of these problems and of these approaches, we also have um, diff um, other uh, um, new solutions. For instance, um, a proposal to integrate the different approaches and also other ways. So let's get started. Before we come to the individual approaches, we first want to make some distinctions that are relatively well established and uh, normally ac um, accepted across the board and also present in the reviewed papers. So first, there's a so-called scope distinctions um, that concerns whether the method explains just a single prediction, this is a local scope, or whether the method aims to explain the whole model, and this is a so-called global scope. Furthermore, there is a distinction of stage that concerns whether the aim of the method is to design a model that is inherently understandable. This, these are um, so-called um, so under hoc methods or whether the aim is to design methods that explain an already trained model. And these are the so-called post hoc methods. For these post hoc methods, there is another distinction that concerns their applicability, namely, um, whether the method is only applicable to specific types of models, for instance, only to support vector machines or uh, solely to deep neural networks, these are the model specific methods, or whether the method is applicable to all types of models, so across the board, and it doesn't matter whether it's a support vector machine, a neural network, or a decision tree, and these are the so-called model agnostic methods. So. Given these background information, let's now come for to the four approaches. 
First, we come to the so-called functioning-based approach. And what do we mean with functioning? So functioning is roughly the way the explainability method extracts information from the model. We have identified five categories in this approach. And first, we have local perturbation. So local perturbation is about changing the inputs to observe how this changes the output. This could, for instance, be used to um, derive feature relevance attributions. Furthermore, there is a category leveraging structure, and this is um, this works by exploiting um, properties of the model, for instance, by examining gradients in the neural networks. Furthermore, we have identified the category meter explanation, that is about aggregating information from other approaches to deliver um, better or um, more comprehensive information. And yeah, another category we identified is architecture modification. And this, um, these methods change a model's infrastructure, for instance, to make it anti hoc uh, explainable or to, um, yeah, to prepare them for other methods that then derive information from the model. Finally, we have identified the category examples that is about picking or distilling examples from, for instance, the training set. Um, we believe that this approach is best suited for people who, wants, who want to design their own method because, yeah, like uh, we said, it's about the functioning of those meta methods. The second re um, approach we identified, um, we called uh, the result-based approach. Roughly with result, we mean the um, semantics of the produced explanation. In this approach, we identified three categories which is first feature importance. And we already um, yeah, talked a little bit about this because for instance, um, yeah, local perturbations um, end up often in um, feature importance attributions. And yeah, feature importance attributions are about indicating features that contributed the most or the least to a prediction. Furthermore, there's the category surrogate model. And yeah, surrogate models about, are about um, yeah, building new models that approximate the opaque or yeah, or the model that should be explained by um, inher inherently or under hoc um, explainable models. Finally, we have examples, and yeah, examples are simply about presenting prototypical examples. And uh, we believe that this approach is most useful for people who want to decide which methods to use in an application, for instance. The third approach we identified is a conceptual approach. This approach is um, about partitioning the field of explainability methods into several conceptual dimensions that are mostly independent of each other. For instance, these dimensions are scope, stage, applicability, as introduced above, or there are many other proposals, for instance, output format and type of problems. Well, we'll come to this approach uh, in more detail later. Let's first highlight for which persons this is likely um, beneficial. And we hold that this is very beneficial for interdisciplinary research. The final approach we found is a mixed approach that is a hybrid of the above approaches. And um, a hybrid in the way that the top level is made up by the scope distinction, the middle level is made up by the applicability distinction, and on the bottom level, we have elements of all other approaches. And um, as most um, of the important terms are introduced in this um, approach, we hold that it's beneficial for newcomers in the field. So let's now come to the challenges. The first challenge we identified is a partially misleading nomenclature. So this starts already with the field um, in general, because there is no clear distinctions between terms like explainability and interpretability. Um, but it's um, also more specifically concerning certain terms. For instance, it's often um, that um, transparent model design is used as a synonym for what we call ad hoc explainability. But we believe that this is a, a misleading nomenclature because transparent is often equated with understandable but just because something is transparent, this does not mean that it's understandable. Furthermore, and as you can see in this table, there are many terms that, um, yeah, that are roughly, um, that are describing the same category, but um, use different terms for them. So 
We have feature-oriented methods, feature relevance, explanation, feature importance methods, all describing the same, um, the same category. While a competent speaker may notice that this refers to the same category, um, other um, categories um, or other yeah, approaches use very different terms to um, refer to the same category. For instance, surrogate models and explanation by simplification um, allude to the same category. Yeah, another uh, point is that there is no consensus on important categories. So here you can already find some categories that are made across several papers, but other papers um, introduce many other categories. So I'll skip them here. And um, yeah, and for the conceptual approach, for instance, Sokol and Flach propose more than 30 dimensions of interest. And the last general challenges we found are differences in classification. So for instance, counterfactual explanations is um, one time uh, classified as local explanation and another time as an example-based explanation. Likewise, TCAF is um, classified as conceptual model and also as a meter explanation. Um, yeah, and this might um, confuse people. Furthermore, there are more fine-grained distinctions. For instance, deep lift and integrated gradients are once categorized as perturbation-based, but in another paper as gradient-based. So this could lead to confusion. And finally, um, one of the most popular explainability methods, namely LIME, is um, categorized in three different ways across um, three papers. And yeah, especially newcomers to the field of XI may be confused by it. Let's now come to challenges of the individual approaches. First, the functioning based and the real world based approach. So, local perturbations could lead to feature importance attributions, like already said. But also, um, leveraging structure could lead to feature importance um, attributions, but also to surrogate models. So, as one can see, it seems like just using one of these approaches um, does not picture uh, does not paint a, a good picture of the landscape. So only together these two approaches can prevail. So now to the conceptual approach. So these are rather technical dimensions that uh, made up the um, conceptual approach. So how could we in a project extract implications for fairness and so on from these um, dimensions and some researchers already noted these problems and tried to solve it. For instance, by introducing output format, um, Bilodo and Longo try to um, cope with it by saying that some output formats are better suited for some persons than for others. For instance, they say that numerical outputs are not suitable for lay persons. Likewise, Langer et al. Um, proposed a complete model of how different dimensions might impact certain desiderata for certain stakeholders. And they say, for instance, that people affected by decisions are more interested in local explanations because they want to find out whether they or the decision they were um, subjected to was uh, biased or not. And regulators might be more interested in global explanations because they want to know whether a method globally uh, discriminates against certain uh, people. Finally, the problems of the mixed approach. And here we have that it, there is sometimes um, confusing exclusion made here because it's sometimes said that visual explanations and local explanations cannot be model specific, but this is simply not true because, for instance, we often have gradients that are examined and this often delivers local explanations. Furthermore, um, these um, on the lowest level, these categories are situated um, yeah, on the same level. And so it seems like they are mutually exclusive. And this is also not explicitly excluded by the papers. But for instance, LIME is a method that is um, that produces a surrogate model that visually indicates local feature relevance. So LIME would belong to all these four highlighted categories here. And this could lead to confusion if um, it's not explicitly spoken about. So as a final part of this um, presentation, we want to quickly discuss one solution we came up. And if you're interested in more details about this solution and uh, other solutions we came up, we kindly invite you to read our paper. So this solution is about integrating the above approaches. Um, basically, we propose to take the conceptual approach and add the dimensions result and functioning um, corresponding to the eponymous um, 
approaches we identified. And yeah, and this concludes the presentation of our paper. For more information, especially about our solutions, see you there.